Today I'm going to be doing a video on five of my unfavorite books of 2013. Um, keep in mind these are just my personal choices. I know some of these um, authors are a lot of people people's favorites and I just, maybe I just read the wrong book. Who knows? I'm open to suggestions. Anyway, um, also I apologize for the weird lighting. Not cooperating with me today, so we'll just go with it. Um, the first book that I want to talk about is The Girl of Fire and Thorn by Ray Carson. Um, this is the first book in the Girl of Fire and Thorn trilogy. Um, I really enjoyed all the other books, however this one, it really did have quite a bit of build up to the actual story, which is fine. It was well written, it was really picturesque, the timing was a little bit weird in this book, but what really got me was the explanation on the back, like the the quick blurb. This book is about a girl who is born and on her naming day, God puts a godstone into her navel, basically showing that she will do something great. Um, the entire series is based on the godstone and it is not mentioned anywhere, on any blurb, anywhere, any website I checked. Um, I think the author really should just trust their readers. I would have probably read this book anyway, even though it, it, it is a YA, um, I guess dystopian wouldn't be the word, but I would have probably still read it anyway, even if whatever it was about. I mean, it was really a, a well-written book, but just wasn't my favorite. Um, the next one is Invisibility by Andrea Kramer and David Levithan. This dust jacket is uber shiny. Can you see that? Maybe? Okay. Um, so this book is about a boy who is invisible and he lives in New York City and a girl moves in next door and she can see him. Um, this is, I believe, a standalone, but it feels unfinished. It feels like there should be more to the story. It was a little bit choppy. Um, I've heard really great things about both Andrea Kramer and David Levithan, and this just... I wasn't impressed. I probably will not be rereading this book, even though the, the cover is really quite gorgeous. Um, so yeah, that's the second one. Um, the third one um, a lot of people are familiar with. It's Matched by Ali Condi. This is about a girl who is matched with her best friend, um, and they're supposed to, you know, court and get married in a dystopian society. But while his face shows up on the screen, there's a face of another boy that just briefly flashes on the screen. And <clears throat> Cassia, the main character, absolutely becomes obsessed with the other boy. Um, I wasn't a fan of this entire trilogy. I just, the covers are gorgeous and they are very, you know, they definitely tell a story of what, what's between the covers, but it just, I was not at all impressed at all. Um, I will definitely not be picking this up again. I wasn't impressed with Ali Condi's writing either, so there's that. Um, now the next one, <laughs> a lot of people, a lot of people talk about this book and a lot of people love this book and that's fine. Um, it is Looking for Alaska by John Green. I, it is a contemporary novel about, um, a girl named Alaska and basically the only thing that I got from this book is that John Green is not a huge fan of Happily Ever After, which is fine, except I found it a little bit pointless. What is this book trying to teach me? What is it trying to... I usually, from contemporary novels, I tend to get some kind of a... something to think about, or... This this really didn't give me anything like that, so I, was, I wasn't particularly impressed. I'm sorry, I know John Green is an amazing writer, a lot of people, he is a lot of people's favorite. I am reluctant to pick up anything else by John Green because of this book. Um, I, I may be wrong, so I may have to look at some other stuff that John Green has written. This was not doing it for me. And last but not least, we have Allegiant by Veronica Roth. This is the third book in the Divergent series. 
and I know a lot of people don't like this book purely because of the ending. So I'm not even going to talk about the ending. What I'm going to talk about is the fact that Four, who is a very strong character and completely lovable and everybody's fairy tale wannabe boyfriend and fangirl whatever, she, Veronica Roth made Four be a whiny, annoying, complete and utter fool. Just, he didn't know what he was doing, he didn't know where he fit into this world, he was insecure, he was a hot mess. Triss was close behind on the hot mess, and it just, this book didn't suck me in like Divergent and Allegiant did, which was very unfortunate because I loved both Divergent and Allegiant. Everybody has their own opinion. I know people that loved this book, which is fine. I wasn't impressed. I read Allegiant about five or six times, or Divergent about five or six times at this point. I highly doubt I will ever pick this book up again. Um, that's pretty much all I have, just the five. I'd be interested to see what uh, some of your unfavorites would be for this year. Um, and hopefully I will be doing a video on my favorites. I filmed it four times now and it hasn't worked. Who knows? Maybe fifth time's the charm. We'll see. Um, hope you have a good night. Bye.